Welcome back to Blender Frenzy's Quarantine Series. I am Justin with um, my rabid wild animal hair. This is true quarantine status right here. This is what you're getting today. And if you notice, I've kind of upgraded my tutorial tools. You can see my mouse is a little bit bigger and it has a little yellow circle around it so that you can see where it is at all times. And then now right below me, you can see uh, I have the screencast keys. So if I do my screencast, you can see what's happening there when I press my keys. So there you go. You're welcome. Uh, let me know if it's too annoying. Um, usually these things are annoying for me, but I know that it gets a little tedious saying um, press alt click shift s shift control alt c so i'm gonna try not to say it and then i'll just let you watch the screencast keys which of course that is what it is built for but anyway let's get started this is where we left off uh last time when we fixed our smooth shading but unfortunately before we paint onto our object we still have to fix one more thing and that is our uvs so i'm going to come over here i'm just going to change our placeholder uh image to uh, black again and then we're going to come over to our UV editing workspace and in our 3d view I'm going to come up here to solid shading mode and in our drop down for that I'm going to change color from material to texture so we can see our texture and then change lighting from studio to flat so we don't have any sort of shading going on here um, now this next step you don't have to do I'm just going to do it to demonstrate what the problem was um, but I'm just going to load in um, a little green dot here so to demonstrate this for you so when I was preparing for the stencil painting tutorial I realized that um, my textures were being distorted and uh, squished here so you can see that this green dot is a perfect circle here in our uh, UV map but here it is squished and that is because if you remember when we did our UV unwrapping after I unwrapped it I actually scaled this so if I come here and I scale this back on the Y this I scaled it up on the Y and now this is more of what the original aspect ratio was for the unwrap and the reason I uh, scaled this was so that I could fill that space um, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do that so what I'm going to do instead is uh, well let's go ahead and undo this here and you can start following along from this point now I'm going to select my seams two and then press the plus to make a duplicate we're going to name this texture paint and then um, I'm just going to unwrap that again here and let's see what is the top I think that's the top yep so this is the top you can see those are selected here I'm in a UV sync selection mode by the way to, in order to do that so in our face select mode I'm going to select this island and then rotate it uh, I'm going to rotate it around this 2d cursor down here so coming up to pivot and then select 2d cursor and then I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees grab that and move that up and now you can see that that is uh, the perfect circle green dot in our 3d view on our faces so if I scale this uh, on the X uh, let's go back into our bounding box center if I scale this on the X or on the Y only you can see that's when our distortion takes place so uh, if I scale it I actually have to scale it on all uh, on both axes there and I'm gonna do that so that I'm not touching the edges of the image so I'm just gonna grab that and move that all the way up here something like that and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one unwrap that and then uh, let's rotate it on the 2d cursor oh let's uh, find make sure that this is the top and that is the top so let's go back into face select mode and actually I can press one two three to go into face select mode edge select or vertex select so I got to remember that um, okay so rotate on the 90 and then grab and move that up and bounding box center scale that down something like that 
Okay, so if we go back to our Seams 2, you can see we still have the original Seams 2. The reason I didn't change this one is because I like to work as non-destructively as possible, and so I always like to have something to fall back on if I royally screw things up. So I'm going to keep the Seams 2 for now, use our Texture Paint as our new one. So let's come back up to our Texture Paint workspace, and over here in our Active Tool tab uh, in our Texture Paint mode, make sure the mode is Single Image, and make sure we have our placeholder image selected and make sure we have our texture paint UVs selected. Now to display our UVs we can come up here to view and then select display texture paint UVs and nothing happens. Did we check that? Yeah we checked that. Why is it not showing our UVs here? And the reason is we have to come over to our mesh tab, go to our UV maps and then not only do we have to select our texture paint but we have to make sure that it is an active render. And now we should be able to see them. This is different than the UV editing workspace where if I just select the UVs, the display changes over here. So you can see I'm selecting back and forth between seams two and texture paint and it's displaying the one that I select. Changing the render over here doesn't do anything in UV editing mode. So it's a little different here in texture paint workspace we have to have both of them selected in order to display those UVs. So after all that, if you still don't see your UVs, there's probably one more thing you need to enable. If you go to your UV editing workspace and make sure sync selection is enabled. If this is disabled, then only what is selected in edit mode will be shown in, both in the UV editing workspace and in the texture paint workspace. So here, if I tab into edit mode, you can see that selected if I press A to select everything and tab back into texture paint mode. Now you can see all of those UVs. But again, it's only what I have selected. So, um, and that may be uh, something that you want to do, just depends on what job you're doing at the time. And you can see that the texture paint workspace and the UV editing workspace work the same in that regard. But I want everything to be shown at all times so I'm just going to make sure that sync selection is enabled and then go back to texture paint workspace and now we are ready to start painting onto our new UVs in our texture paint mode using stencils from images.